you ever been on the top of a mountain and shortly after that been down in the valley? You just got a big job promotion, the one you've been waiting for. And then your car breaks down. So you're on top of the mountain and now you're in the valley. Or maybe you just graduated high school. But everybody keeps asking you, so what are you gonna major in? What are you gonna do next? And you don't know yet. So you're back down in the valley again. Or you just graduated and you don't get a ceremony. You get that high experience just to be let down. I know I've been through situations like that before many times, and I'm sure you have too. We find ourselves in these high moments in life. Things are going wonderful, but then something happens to bring us back down low. I think the hardest times I've ever had that are when I have something wonderfully exciting happen and I go to tell somebody, I want to share my experience with somebody else. I want to share my mountaintop experience. And when I go to them, they give me a valley. They discourage me. Oh, it becomes about them. And it hurts. So, you get up on that mountain and you fall into that valley. Did you know that there's somebody in the Bible who actually went through this experience? He was high up on the mountain and went down into the valley. Things were going great for him. In 1 Kings 18, Elijah goes against the prophets of Baal, feeling like he was the only prophet of God having to test who was the true God. Is it God or is it Baal? And so they set up each of them their altars. And Elijah, being the honorable man, allowed the prophets of Baal to go first. And they set theirs up and put their sacrifice up. And then they began calling out to their God, the God of Baal, to bring down fire, to get rid of their sacrifice, to accept their sacrifice. They ran around in circles. They cut themselves. They did whatever they could to get their God's attention. And none of it was working. And they did this practically all day long. Well, now it was Elijah's turn. And he gets up there such a contrast between the way that the prophets of Baal react with their God and the way that Elijah reacts to our God. He says, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and I am your servant and that I have done all these things at your word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me that this people may know that you are the Lord God and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. It's in 1 Kings 18, 36 and 37. He came to God in such peace, reverence. He praised God and God answered. Seriously, a huge contrast between the two. Fire came down from heaven and the sacrifice was accepted. All the prophets of Baal were then killed and the drought that there, the drought had ended right then and there after three and a half years. Talk about a mountaintop experience. I'm sure many people were converted that day. Unfortunately, we have to turn the page and go to the next chapter. 1 Kings 19, Jezebel hears about this. Wicked Queen Jezebel. She now wants the life of Elijah. In 1 Kings 19, we come back to wicked Queen Jezebel. Jezebel has heard about everything that has happened. And she's furious, she's angry, and she wants the life of Elijah. Now, if the threat of life has does not bring you down off the mountaintop, I don't know what will. So not only was Elijah's life at stake, he felt alone. He thought he was the only prophet of God left. So he left. He ran to the mountains. <laughs> Funny, he came off a mountaintop experience 
to run to the mountains to experience his valley. God asked Elijah why he was there. His response, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. 1 Kings 19.10 I wonder if God laughed. Honestly, I mean, God knows everything. Technically, God didn't even have to ask Elijah, why are you here? He already knew. And God's response after all was said and done, go back. In verse 15, God tells Elijah to go back to where he came from because he wasn't the only one. There were 7,000 still in Israel who had not bowed their knee to Baal. There were still 7,000 who had stood faithful to God. There is a song by Torrin Wells it's called Hills and Valleys. And it says, on the mountains I will bow my life to the one who sent me there. In the valley I will lift my eyes to the one who sees me there. When I'm standing on the mountain, I didn't get there on my own. When I'm walking through the valley, I know I am not alone. That's the key. We need to praise God, whether we're on the mountaintop or in the valley. Those are the two places we usually forget. We didn't get on that mountaintop on our own. When Elijah defeated the prophets of Baal, it was God all the way. When he was in his valley, God was with him the whole time. We are not alone in our hard times. God is there for us each step of the way. God says in Isaiah 45 verse 10, For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath mercy on thee. In the book, Thoughts from the Mount of Blessings, we're told, If you have given yourself to God to do His work, you have no need to be anxious for tomorrow. He whose servant you are knows the end from the beginning. The events of tomorrow, which are hidden from your view, are open to the eyes of him who is omnipotent. When we take into our hands the management of things with which we have to do and depend upon our own wisdom for success, we are taking a burden which God has not given us and are trying to bear it without his aid. We are taking upon ourselves the responsibility that belongs to God and thus are really putting ourselves in His place. We may well have anxiety and anticipate danger and loss for it is certain to befall us. But when we really believe that God loves us and means to do us good, we will cease to worry about the future. We shall trust God as a child trusts a loving parent. Then our troubles and torments will disappear, for our will is swallowed up in the will of God. And that's found on page 100, paragraph 1 and 2. When you are on the mountain experience, praise God, because He is the one who got you there. And hold on to that. Write it down so you don't forget you were there. Then, when you are in the valley, look towards Him, the one who will never leave you nor forsake you. Go back to the memory of that mountaintop experience. Your valley is only temporary. He will bring you through. This is possible only by God's amazing grace. Today's verse that I will be hand lettering is found in Isaiah 54 verse 10. And it says, For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath mercy on thee. And so I have already painted a background. So I did this with um, some acrylic paint on watercolor paper. And then the markers that I will be using today uh, one of them is 
the big marking it's platinum silver another one is the studio series artist marker and it's black so I will be using that for our couple different accents and outlines and then the last one is uniball and it is a white gel pen and so I will be using that for uh, writing on the black but also for a couple other highlights as well and so uh, let's get started <laughs> 